Welcome back to another video guys. I'm glad you're here joining me today and as you can probably tell I'm back again at the Woodland Mills Sawmill. This week I am going to concentrate on trying to clean up some of the logs that I've been putting off, putting off, putting off. And if you're like me, uh, you like to drag in. You can probably see this log here is really lopsided. It never shows up uh, as well on camera as in real life, but trust me, it's, it's pretty bowed. Um, this here, um, if you watched my last video, I cut up some basswood lumber. Um, this is also basswood. It's just kind of a, a crooked log, and uh, I know that it's probably not going to give off the best lumber, at least in my experience, when a log's really bowed like that. Um, it ends up being really difficult trying to, to keep it straight over time, it, it'll just kind of warp. But uh, having said that, I've already got the log cut up and pulled in here by the mill. I'm always in need of 2x4s and especially around the farm, a lot of times they don't need to be perfect. So I'm throwing this log up on here, you, you can probably kind of tell I'm fighting with it a bit here just trying to get it to sit up against the log stops but uh, I figure I'll cut this up into some 2x4s and uh, even if they bow or warp or whatnot around the farm I will definitely find something to do with them. And if you watch to the last of my last video, or to the end of my last video, I should say, you probably saw me kind of talking about how yellow the basswood had turned. And I was kind of surprised. Uh, you can kind of see on this log um, why I might have been so surprised of how white the, the wood is on the side of that log there. And I was just really surprised because... Uh, it almost, you can kind of see right at the far end there, the really dark spot on the end. It, it almost turned that color from, from the really white color that it is now. And I suppose that's a common thing that happens, but I was just kind of surprised at the drastic change that took place over just a few days there. And there's a better look at how white it is when you're cutting it up kind of thing. So in this particular log uh, I ended up just getting an 8x8 cant squared up so um, what a, the method I'm using now is I'm uh, cutting right through the middle you can see so uh, the top and bottom sections are both four inches wide and then once I get this pass done what I did was I just standed those up vertically so the two four inch pieces were side by side here now and then I just started taking uh, two inch passes and uh, once I got all the way done with that uh, job that left me with uh, eight two by fours and uh, like I was saying started off with a really warped bent log so I'm not expecting uh, them to stay as straight as they are now for very long but you never know I'll set them off to the side stack them up and uh, definitely get used for something like I was saying before. So it's actually not that warm out to be in a t-shirt right now but uh, like a lot of you guys I work up a bit of a sweat at the sawmill so it was kind of nice to get out of the uh, long sleeve shirt and uh, cool down a little bit. Uh, the cedar log I threw up on here was a bit too long for the sawmill. I've kind of developed a bit better of an eye now. I, I know that the mill won't be able to get all the way down the track to cut through this. So, uh, like I was saying, developed a bit of an eye. So grab the chainsaw, cut her down to where I'm pretty confident the uh, mill can pass through that now. And um, still leave me a bit over 16 feet. Um, I was telling myself at the start of the day when I came in here that I was going to cut everything into 2x4s because it's the most common common dimension of lumber we use around the farm. Usually 2x4s, you know, just the most common dimension of lumber for everything, but um, I always have a hard time with these um, big cedar logs. I, not 
big in diameter, but it's just really nice and straight and 16 feet long. So I uh, kind of during the process of squaring this log up slowly kind of changed my mind after I found out that I'd be able to get a nice square 6x6 post. And if you're wondering what's going on here, I got my uh, tripod and camera just a little bit too close to the, the sawmill trying to get in there for a closer shot for you guys. Um, so I kind of gently just push it back on an angle and there we're back down flat again. Just wanted to see if I could get through that cut without knocking the camera over. I succeeded that time. I was kind of surprised that I ended up getting a full 6x6 post out of this uh, one just because the small end wasn't very big around and usually on big log, I keep saying big, but what I mean is, you know, 16 feet in length that uh, usually even if they look straight by the time you start trying to square them up, you realize how not straight they really are and uh, end up having to take some lesser lumber out of it, but I'm really happy this one worked out so well a um, little bit of bark on the very small end but we use those for posts for buildings and whatnot to put in the ground so uh, you won't even notice that once once it's in the ground four feet I think I'm starting to develop a bit of a motto that if you can pick up by hand and put the log on the mill it might be a little bit too big to get much decent lumber out of but in some of these cases and yeah I'm about to hit the camera right here again trying to <laughs> I'm starting to try to get things a little too close I think so uh, that time I actually did hit the camera luckily it's okay I'll reset up here a bit of ways from it but like I was saying if you can pick up the log and set it on there by hand it's probably a bit too small but in uh, a lot of these cases when I'm cutting up really small logs like this the reason is is it's just the top of a tree of a bigger um, log that I brought in and usually I just drag these in right at the same time so it's not really that much extra effort for me to bring these in and once they're in here it honestly only takes just a couple minutes to get this all sawed up. Uh, I think at the end here I only end up getting two 2x4s two out of it so it's definitely not uh, a very efficient way to cut lumber but like I was saying when you have it sitting there at your disposal anyways the sure beats just chucking it into the woods somewhere and I suppose you could uh, cut it up for kindling or something like that but the amount of slabs that are coming off this mill now I got more kindling than I'll use in 10 years probably so I can never argue with a couple nice looking cedar 2x4s And there we go, I thought I'd just give you guys a little glimpse of what it actually looks like for the grain and whatnot. Um, the, if you're not familiar, this is white cedar. Um, I know a lot, a lot of the large box stores and that all sell red cedar, at least in our area, for decking and that kind of thing. We have white cedar on our property, uh, shares a lot of the same characteristics. And uh, you can probably see the eight basswood two by fours there on the top of the the pile that I cut up earlier I already got them stacked and got, just got uh, just got to put up the uh, 
two cedar two by fours that I just finished up cutting get them stacked up and then uh, one of the one of the many things that I still have to work on with my setup is getting a better way to keep all my lumber covered throw the tarp on her for now I know that's not ideal it'd be nice to have some sort of structure with a steel roof or something over it but uh, for now I'm, I'm just kind of making do and uh, hopefully in the not too distant future I can get something a bit more permanent set up that'll really uh, make my setup a lot better. Anyways guys that's going to be everything for me today. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.